Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jedi, Sith, Mandalorians, Twi'leks, Gamorrean guards, and everything in between to another exciting, action-packed, fully stacked, totally yeah! guns are showing tonight, boys and girls, edition of the new Force Order for Life. Goosh, goosh, goosh. Podcast. We are a Star Wars podcast brought to you by us. Three of the sexiest, smartest, bravest, most entertaining MILF hunting MOOF milkers <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away, a.k.a. the fans. And we're bringing it to you, the fans. I am one third of your hosts. I am a pro wrestler. I am current three belt holding champion in a galaxy far, far away. A true professional. I am your boy, GGP, aka Greek God Papa Don. And alongside with me, I have a thunder stealing, looking into the mic with his beautiful hazel eyes. <laughs> And it's freshly shaved Ted, but don't get it twisted. He still has a kung fu grip, and he still likes to be witty and pretty, and he's still a medical droid, and a malicious, vindictive, very pleased because today is Revenge of the Fifth Sith Lord. Introduce yourself, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, I am... The Dark Lord of the Podcast, the Sith Ari, the Rampaging Reverend Kiss, the Butcher, your boy Spiro, a.k.a. Dar Spiro, and end. happy revenge of the fucking fifth. It is the Dark Lord holiday. Anyway, I am smarter than 2MB, more technical than FX7, the God of Steel and Thunder, and the guy who wishes to almighty baby Jesus that he had a Camino cloning chamber. Because, boys, there ain't enough hours in the day. Dr. Destroyo, Alex Arroyo. Hashtag <laughs> preach. Oh, my brother, <laughs> testify. In that effect. Uh, well, boys and girls, a lot of stuff has happened in the last 48 hours. The uh, May the 4th holiday, Star Wars Day, has come, has gone. Revenge of the 5th is upon us today. And a lot of news has dropped in the last 48 hours. We were witnessed yesterday to the end of an era, end of the Clone Wars, a little bittersweet. We went over it last night on our uh, Clone Wars report show, which was our, I guess, final episode, unless we decide to dive back into the archives and go through the episodes. If you guys love it that much, let us know. We'll do it. And we also... Uh, let you guys have an exclusive, a YouTube exclusive. It will not be brought to you via podcast. You guys want to see, you guys want to hear us. All you have to do is go to our YouTube page. New Force Order is the YouTube page. Like the page. Subscribe to it. Like the video, I mean. Subscribe to the page. Hit the notification bell. Leave a comment. All that good stuff. And what we did is we did a latest episode of Mandomania. Oh, yeah, brother. Touching base on the gallery, Star Wars galleries, which was the new documentary series on the clo on, not the Clone Wars, my bad, on the, uh, the Mandalorian. So we talked about the first episode last night. So you guys can go to YouTube and check it out. Tell all your friends, both of them. Tell your family members. Tell your girlfriends, yeah, right. You guys are Star Wars fans. You ain't got no girlfriends. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> man. So, so listen, man. Take your hand off of your fucking chicken. Stop choking it, and with that hand, stick uh, your uh, slice. Uh, 
over there to fucking YouTube, subscribe and hit notifications like GGP said. All right. And, and don't over act where? like you ain't jerking off. Over where? Over where? Over here. I'm over here now. Over here now. Yo, when you put that clip in the show and you did the dice clip, I. I'm talking casino clip. We gotta get the I casino know, clip. But the dice oh. clip is hilarious. Oh, it is hilarious. It is. Don't get me wrong. I pop. <laughs> yeah, I'm over here see, now. I'm a professional. Now I'm over here. <laughs> then I'm over there. Anyhow, here's the big news of the week so far. Star Wars new movie. The announcement of its director slash co-writer. Um, you may know him. We know him because he's a great director. He directed the final episode. Ron Jeremy. Oh, no, director. Fuck. He's both. Is he really? He directs? Of course he does. They all direct. Oh. I direct I you suck my dick, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was just direct, <laughs> not direct. Anyhow. Um, he, di- he directed the last episode of The Mandalorian. He voiced IG-88. You may know him from uh, Thor, Ragnarok. He also was very famous or... Got noticed because he did that. Uh, what was it called? The Shadows movie. Uh, into, the, uh, what, into the Shadows. What, no, what uh, what we do in the shadows? The movie yeah, we, and and it's a series now. Oh, it's a series too. Is he in Hilarious. the series? I don't know if he's in the series. I haven't seen it yet, but the movie was fucking hilarious, man. It's like a vampire comedy, right? Yeah, it's like a bunch of vampires who are fucking roommates and they're fighting over chores and all this shit. It's fucking yeah, funny, man. He also did Jojo Rabbit, which was very good. Uh, he, obviously, I'm dropping his credentials. You may know who I'm talking about. And if you don't, well, his name is Taika Watiti. Now, he's a very great director. He knows how to blend action and comedy very gracefully um, to the point where it's not the comedy isn't making fun of the action. It's actually uh, helping it, if you will. If you saw Thor, you know exactly what I mean. Yeah. Um, so he's co-writing the movie along with Oscar nominee Christy Wilson Cairns or Carnes, C A I R N S. What is she known for? She did 1917. Did she? She did yeah. all those guys. <laughs> Damn, yeah, beat me to it, Spiro. She I took. She, Dad, she, hold up. Sorry, that's two weeks in a row, man. Cheers to Dude. you, my friend. Thank Give me my thunder. Oh, two weeks shit. in a row. Walk it down. She, she beat what's her name's record? Uh, Jasmine St. Clair. Oh, shit. But did she fuck the Blue Meanie? Uh, probably not. But um, uh, shout out to Brian, by the way. He's a good dude. Uh, so that's that. So it's been uh, confirmed by Star Wars. Uh, on StarWars.com. What do you guys think about the uh, the news? What's your take on it? I think it's awesome. I think, you know, I think Star Wars kind of in the past has struggled with that action comedy role because if you look at the, you know, the, the original trilogy, the only, you know, we had some, the, the, most of the comedy relief was delivered by R2-D2 and C-3PO. In the sequel it's trilogy, Solo. They, or about Han Solo, he was uh, yeah, great. right, yeah, yeah. But was he intentionally being funny? Was he just being a prick? You know, it was one of those ones where, but it came natural to Harrison. That's just Harrison's personality. Things, the comedy in 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 the in the Force Awakens, in Last Jedi, and Rise of Skywalker, less so in Rise of Skywalker, but in the, in the in the former two felt a little forced, and at times, especially in Last Jedi, did not work. So, you know, I I, I get where they're gonna go with this. Um, and we know we, we, we know what movies Taika kind of makes. I'm excited to see it. I think he's a great director. I think he'll be the perfect person to do like, like I would love to see him do like a Cassian Andor, or, you know, K, K, K2SO kind of series where they could have that, that play off of each other where they're doing that buddy cop stuff. Because I think that would be the perfect vehicle for him. Something similar to that. So you love that Cassian and their K2SO uh, mashup pretty much. You keep bringing them up. I do. I'm, listen, and, I'm and, you put them o- and, and you put them over Han and Chewie, which is... I didn't necessarily put them over. I said, we have to wait to see what the series shows. So what do you think? What's your take, Spear? Man, First of all, man, you know, we keep saying it. What's better than Star Wars, right? 
right? I mean, more Go fucking stones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No. <laughs> but uh, listen, man, I agree with everything Doc said, man. The In the sequel tr- trilogy, especially, you could tell, man, the fucking comedy was, was forced. I mean, Marvel does that too, but they make it work. Taika is a guy that can blend comedy and action. And if you're going to bring comedy to Star Wars, I don't think there's anybody else better to fucking do it. Um, yeah, he the the comedy definitely enhances the uh, action. And I, I think it's going to be great, man. Now, two things. One, his take on Thor with the marketing the music the colors everything was very 80 ish yep do you think we're gonna see the same with star wars a little retro action going on and the second thing i want to ask you guys and get your opinion on do you think it's only for one film do you think they're putting a band-aid on on the 2020 uh two release or do you think he's gonna write a trilogy uh, as for, for the second question first, uh, who knows? Um, I guess they're going to have to see how it goes. They've been very, uh, you know, um, dependent upon the box office. Like, you know, for sure we thought Solo was going to be more than one film. And it looks like it should have been more than one film based on the way they ended. It. But we're still kind of sitting in oblivion now with that, with no news about that. So I think he's probably going to live and die with, with what happens at the box office. Um, as far as making Star Wars... 80s i mean star wars is 80s uh, you know the original one was 80s are they going to go back and do something similar i mean they went back for rogue one to do that 70s kind of feel you know with the with the costumes and the the backdrops and the computers and the hair um if he does go to the 80s i don't know is it going to the well one too many times he's already been there kind of with thor with all the music and the like you said the colors and the scheme i don't know um I think they should just give him the ball, let him do, you know, th- throw some ideas out there and see what happens. I think he's a great person to be picked. My guess is he was probably picked by, you know, Filoni and Favreau probably threw his name into a hat when they were asked who should be doing this. Um, and since he seems to have his finger on the pulse, they gave it to him. So who knows? Um, but uh, I'm, I'm curious to see what he brings, whatever it's going to be. Okay, Spiro, what about you? Stop yelling at your assistant. It's her name day. It's her name day, but it's also get her ass whoop day. Listen, man, uh, Doc is on the money there, man. I I personally, I don't think they're going to do the whole 80s thing. I think it's going to have, um, I think he's going to bring his, his flavor, but, but he's going to do his best to stay true to Star Wars. You know, and... Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think, I think he respects it enough to not go do and make the same mistakes that Brian Johnson made. So, well, so, so you know, I, I think, I think, like you said, he he's already been proven that he understands the the product, understands the concept of it, and I think he could he could pull it off. So I, I completely agree. Well, listen, one thing's for sure. Okay, and uh, I could tell you this as far as being on the outside looking in, but also um, just by seeing the track record itself. Taika Waititi is a fan of Star Wars, right? And he was part of that dirty dozen group, if you will, that that Magnificent Seven in the first series of uh of uh, mandalorian the first season and they all on the same wavelength where they're not looking to tell that story they're just looking to tell a great story which is what bryce dallas howard said that we spoke about on our show that you guys can catch on our youtube channel new force order it's an exclusive um but we all know because him coming out and talking you know, sarcastically about how the, it's amateur hour here. They don't know what they're doing. That he meant the opposite. That he's not. He even said, "I'm not really a fan. I barely know the topic." So you know, he's obviously a geek like all of us, or a nerd, whatever great terminology you want want to use. Uh, another nerd, who's also a fellow Dark Lord of the Sith, Sam Witwer, came out and was saying 
that Ryan Johnson, which is Spiro's favorite director <laughs> in the Star Wars universe, who directed my favorite to uh, my favorite to fucking slaughter, yeah, yeah, uh, favorite uh, movie, The Last Jedi, claims that uh, the Last Jedi director doesn't know Star Wars, and he said this the following last jedi to me felt like a movie made by a guy who hadn't quite done his homework i think ryan johnson's a talented guy but bruce lee didn't develop jeet kune do without learning kung fu first you can't reinvent star wars without knowing star wars first and he didn't for me make a complimenting argument for why luke didn't go help his sister there were a lot of things in The Last Jedi I found compelling in a Ryan Giants filmmaker point of view. They just didn't fit into Star Wars. I don't think he did his Star Wars homework. The themes, what's it about, what the characters are about. But as a standalone film, if I don't know what the Jedi are or who Luke is or what he represents, I think there's some compelling things in there. If that's meaningful to you, that's awesome. So there you have it. Sam Witwer, who is like the Britannica encyclopedia of Star Wars. That's right, folks. An encyclopedia used to be what Google is now. Before search engines, we had the World Book series of encyclopedias and the Britannica encyclopedias. That's how we did our book reports. We would look into the volumes, look at the thing, and plagiarize the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, there was a time when you can when you can open this this vessel, so to speak, and, it, and there were these weird things made of wood, and there was text in it. What? Those things, they they were called uh, b- think, box? B- box? box? Be- beaks? I'm not sure, guys, but yeah, anyways, man. Listen, man. They were like can... holocrons. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, they were we like those... holocrons, but on paper. Exactly. You know what, man? If fucking Darth Maul expresses and seconds my sentiment, that's all that needs to fucking be said, man. On Revenge of the Fifth. On Revenge of the Fifth. Thank you for this gift. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. He, he he did call him out like a bitch, though. I mean, he put him on blast. He told him, uh, you don't do your fucking homework. You made a good movie, but not a Star Wars movie. Um, interesting. Listen, I think if anybody in the whole Disney under the, you know, hush hush banner of Disney, where you're not supposed to talk to anybody, if anybody in the world that we can get on this show, my guess is going to be Sam Witwer because he likes to fucking talk and he seems to be. In the same line as we are, so and he doesn't know, give a fuck, it seems he does like not give a fuck, you know, which is great. So I think he would be a perfect guest for us to talk to. All right, let's try to reach out to him and uh the fans out there, all three of them, hit him up on Twitter, let him know that he should enter the NFO podcast so we can talk shop about Star Wars. So uh, aside from the talk Taika what T D news that dropped, uh it was confirmed by Star Wars. That Emmy-nominated writer Leslie Hedlund from Russian Doll and Bachelorette is currently developing a, a oh, new shit. untitled Star Wars series for Disney+. Plus. Oh, Hedlund God. will write, executive produce, and serve as showrunner for the series, Here which adds good. to a growing list of Star Wars stories for Disney streaming platform, including The Mandalorian, now in post-production on Season 2. And two other previously announced series, one based on Cassian, Cassian Andor's life prior to the events of Rogue One, the Star Wars story, our producers are our former producers' favorite Star Wars film, and another following the adventures of Obi Wan Kenobi between Star Wars. Kenobi, Avengers- who's Obi Wan Kenobi? Yeah, the Greek version. Kenobi, sorry, the Kenobi. Japanese version. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> between Revenge of the Sith and New Hope. So now here's the deal. I, you know, we got the news last week that this person was being, they were livid, allegedly, uh, rumor has it, from Disney that she got hired because she has a lot of legal baggage ent- enthralled with her because she was uh, Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant. Yeah. Now, 
the rumors also were saying that this series would be female centric and female oriented and female based, but Disney didn't mention anything regarding that. So, do you think it changed, or do you think they're just not bringing that word up because they don't want to start waves? Listen, before we answer that question, I'm going to give you a little insider information. A little birdie told me the name and the premise of this show. <laughs> I can't wait. They're bringing back a prequel. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who's this little birdie? I, I, I cannot divulge my sources. Can you it's tell a, us all it, fair? It's a CI, okay? So I'm letting you know that, all right? CI, um, Central conf- Intelligence? Confidential Informant. Spirit knows what I'm talking about. So. Yeah. <laughs> It's bringing back a prequel character, okay? And they, it's going to be in a Bachelorette style of show. And it's called Who Wanna Bang Lotto? <laughs> <laughs> they're going to bring out they're going to bring out 15 Toydarian chicks and they're all going to vie for Waddle's affection. Oh man. For his affection <laughs> or for his long nose? Both. <laughs> so, what do you guys think about that? Man, you know what? First of all, it's like when I heard the whole everything, all the news, minus the Harvey Weinstein shit and minus the whole female centricness, I was like, oh, hey, cool. It sounds it sounds great. OK, but you know what, man? We're talking about another one. They're bringing on somebody who's another one of these. I have to save the women, um, you know, social justice trash. OK. She's going to save the women, right? The same bitch that turned a fucking blind eye, okay, whenever some poor girl went in for a fucking casting call and fucking got raped and shit, right? The same bitch who probably kept fucking stashed away safely Weinstein's book of fucking, you know, victims and and all that shit. Allegedly. Allegedly. This is all allegedly. Okay, that's for it, so it's not allegedly. That, no, no, know, no. Her involvement is allegedly. Oh, yeah. no, so, so she's going to come now and she's going to save women in a galaxy far, far away that the women are in no need of fucking saving. Name one weak female character that they've written. OK, she she didn't save anybody in real life. She doesn't need to save anybody in movies. OK, so we don't need her here. Okay, send her ass packing. She should be in a goddamn coronavirus infested cell next to that jack off. Okay, fuck, fuck that bitch. Okay, so uh, I love that. By the way, that was fantastic and exactly what I expected. It's uh, time to build you, up the pop. Build you, up the pop, Doc. You never let me down, Sphero. Never. Uh, so, what's better than Star Wars? More fucking Star Wars, except when it's saddled with all this fucking bullshit that's lying around the series before they even drop the fucking clicker on the first scene. It's like, really? You're going to take all this shit, roll it into a fucking ball, and then shove it down my throat already with this? Oh, it's going to be an all-female cast, and it's by a female director who had ties to Harvey Weinstein, like, you know, shining her fucking light now. You know what? I am so not excited about this fucking series. It's difficult for me to actually convey my non-excitement about this series. I'm Listen, with you, brother. First things first. I heard it. I heard <laughs> from a little birdie, a little uh, CI, that you like things shoved down your throat. So yeah, that's oh. the first thing. <laughs> Secondly, not judging, bro. Not, not no, judging. not judging. No. Secondly, it, is ta- it is Taco Tuesday on Cinco de Mayo nice. during nice. the coronavirus. Exactly. <laughs> So, secondly, uh, I just got to add, you know, we've had news in the past of so-and-so and and this guy being involved in Star Wars, and then later nothing's happened. You know, this the Game of Thrones guys, this new trilogy by Ryan Johnson, Lord and Miller. I mean, there's been been a lot of bumps in the road. So who knows if it's just a flavor of the week this week and nothing transcends down the road. Maybe she hits a home run and maybe, you know, who knows? There's a lot of things going on from what I understand. Have I heard uh, backstage between Disney and Lucasfilm? Some are saying Kathleen Kennedy hired her because she's playing hardball (laughs) with the execs, you know, trying to make a point about something. I don't know. These are rumors. And no one's, no one's, nobody is 
releasing their sources. So it's all hearsay. So take it with a grain of salt. But anyway, something that you don't have to take with a grain of salt is that um, two directors have confirmed that they are going to be part of season two of The Mandalorian. First director, you know him from El Mariachi. You know him from Alita Battle Angel, Spy Kids, uh, Grindhouse. We're talking none other than Rob Robert Rodriguez. And the second direction, you know him from uh, Ant-Man. And uh, Ant-Man 2, Peyton Reed. So they're both on... They both confirmed it on Twitter. Uh, Robert Rodriguez tweet said, I am truly humbled to say I have now had the very rare privilege of directing the biggest star in the universe. And he's sitting next to Baby Yoda. And then Peyton Reed just had a picture. Uh, hashtag may the fourth be with you. And it's his directing chair with the Mandalorian helmet on it. So what do you guys think? You guys are fans of Peyton Reed and uh, Robert Rodriguez? All right, well, you know what, man? First of all, con congratulations. Uh, I actually like the work that both guys do. More Robert Rodriguez, you know, I, I'm, I like him more. I think he brings a directing and an aesthetic style that lends itself to a series like this. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm actually excited to see uh, Peyton Reed. I, I think he's, he's not as great as... Taika, I think, with with the uh, comedy, but he's still good, you know. So yeah, man, sure, awesome. I loved Ant Man and Ant Man too. I thought it was a great. They were good. Yeah, yeah, agreed. So you know, Robert Rodriguez was the golden child of the two thousands. He was the guy who anything he touched was great, was awesome. And then like he kind of like you know just has been kind of coasting for the last I don't know decade or so. Um, he worked with Lucha Underground, no? Yeah, uh, did he? I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. That was a winner. Um, <laughs> wasn't bad. So, oh. Great. No, you know what, man? Yeah, it was produced very well, actually. I'll, I'll yeah, give that. The, the episodic TV show was good. The plots aside, man, they had some nice uh, yeah. action in that, man. Some of the, some of the plots were good. Um, so, I'm, But I'm excited for him because I like his style. I think, it, I think he could bring a different piece to the Star Wars puzzle. Um, I'm curious to see how much they're going to give him on a leash to see what he could do. I mean, we've already seen in the Mando, it's not as kid friendly as other Disney shows is are. Um, and we know Robert loves his, his, his guts and his gore and his explosions and his decapitations and all that jazz. So but, like Chris, Sally Chris now, all that jazz. Um, but, but uh, hold on, hold on, yes. hold on to play devil's advocate. Please. He's also the guy who did Spy Kids. Yes, I agree with you. I understand that. So but, he's, but, he's, but he, he's sitting on both sides of the spectrum. Yes, but he was given Spy Kids with a specific, you know, goal. I mean, he, to make a kids movie. Is is the is is the Mandalorian classified as a kids show? I don't think so. So, I'm I, I'm really interested to see how much rain and how much kind of you know leeway they give him to make what he wants and see his vision, because I would love to see a fucking you know chop him up. Dark saber flipping off fucking limbs, yeah. decapitating people, getting crazy. Well, your your abuela's favorite actor, uh, who plays uh, Moff Gideon, what's his name? John Exposito. What is it? John Carlo. John Carlo. John Carlo he said there's going to be um, a lot of lightsaber dueling that he took part on. He broke three or four dark saber while he was filming. He said he went in ham. So. You know, unless, unless he broke over somebody's fucking teeth, uh, you know th that's the shit I want to see. <laughs> hey man, yeah. yo, that fucking that fucking dark saber looks fucking nice, man. I mean, th that's an actual uh, practical prop, man. Yeah, and it's it, and it looks good, and, and on camera, it, it's also nice, man. It looks nice. But you know what's cool? Uh, these two individuals joined. Uh, a class of great directors. I mean, they're great directors to begin with, but now they're in the you know the the the, the family of the the original directors from the first season. These are only two. We had what six, five in the first season. We had Bryce, 
We had Taika. We had uh, uh, Uar Armbar. <laughs> <laughs> he stole my thunder. Uh, who else did we have? And we had uh, Filoni, Favreau, Favreau, uh, and uh, Favreau didn't direct. It was them mom? three, right? Them three and Taika, four. Yeah. So I guess if Filoni is directing anything in season two, and then we have these two people, maybe there's a fourth guy. Maybe there isn't. I don't know. All right. All right, speculate now. Who would you think would be a good person to, to, to throw a, their name into that mix? Uh, I got two names off the top of my head. I got two names, too, but I got three names, actually. All right. But no, they're not gonna, it's not going to happen. All I'm right, going to say, say good. Say one. Guy Ritchie. All right, good. Spiro. Shit, man. Um, I'll say mine. Spiel, catch Spielberg. Spielberg? Okay. Nah, he wouldn't do it. You know what, man? You know what? I'm not a fan of that f- fucker, man, to be what? honest. He does. No, listen, man. I'm not saying, yo, he's one of the greatest, most talented ever, but for some reason, there's something about his films that just hit me the wrong way, man. I think they're too, like, warm and fuzzy, man. I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's it, it, it just. Uh, all right. But I'm going to say this. Somebody I would like to fucking see is Zack Snyder. That would be good. I'll come down with that. Close your eyes and picture a five-year-old Spiro watching E.T. right now, sitting sitting with his oh, you know, his parents. Think a huge tub of popcorn in front of him, and he's sitting down watching E.T., and E.T. flies off in the air, and you hear the music, and Spiro's like, what the fuck is this soft-ass shit? Bro, you must have been sitting right behind me when I was a kid, and I went to fucking see that movie, man, my friend's mother took a group of us, and I'm looking at the movies, and I think there was some other action like Chuck Norris and shit, and I'm like, oh, yo, yo, this one, this one. No, this bitch took us to see (laughs) E.T., and I'm sitting in there, and I'm like, all right, fuck it. I mean, listen, man, it's a great film, but it's not the film I wanted to sit in a fucking... 1980s sticky fucking floor New York City theater to fucking watch, man. Somebody smoke a weed in the back, another guy getting a hand job in the back from a dude. <laughs> yeah, man. Fuck that shit. Anyways. Well, listen, we all know that when that happened and you were watching it, you were crying like a bitch because E.T.'s canon and Revan isn't. So <laughs> yeah, I was I I I wanted to cry like a bitch because the movie w- wouldn't fucking end, bro. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, guys. You know, I, I need my, my damn meds. Yeah, I can fix this hero standing up in the theater. Hey, E.T., go home, motherfucker. I don't want to go. <laughs> go. I want to leave. Let's you go. Fucking home. illegal son of a bitch. Get the fuck out of here. Listen, uh, I, I don't know what's going on, but. but you non documented extraterrestrial, get out of here. I don't know what's yeah. going on, but, but I think Revenge of the Fifth ha- has brought the, the most evil version of Spiro we've ever seen on the show. Good. I, we, uh, yeah. Well, listen, speaking about evil versions of individuals, Star Wars has just changed everything we know about the Sith rule of two. Now, a few people out there don't know what the rule of two is. The rule of two is an old directive of the Sith Order that was first mentioned by Yoda in Star Wars The Phantom Menace. For years, fans took the rule at face value, but based on new details from the Rise of Skywalker Jr. novelization, there could be more to the rule than one thought. The original phrasing of the directive, as Yoda first put it, is that, hmm... Always two there are. No more, no less. A master and an apprentice. (laughs) This refers to the Sith, who in contrast to the myriad Jedi throughout throughout the galaxy, appears in scarce numbers. All right, so they've always said, obviously there's only two. But here's the deal. This is what they said in the novel. Uh, let me scroll down. It's a long article. I don't want to go through the explanation. They basically hope. said that it's two Shut who... Up. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Steal my they, thunder. They basically said it's it's not the rule of two, a Mathis apprentice. It's that two are ruling. Two Sith are ruling. And the reason they kind of explained all that is because, yeah, the, you know, the, the, the movies are great and all, but when they're expanding out to 
video games and comic books and TV shows, they need more villains to put in there. And they were kind of boxed in if they wanted to use any Sith or Force users against, you know, the uh, the protagonist, that they needed other people and other Sith Force users to actually show up and be characters. Like the Inquisitors, like Asajj, like, uh, you know, the fact that Maul was back. So they kind of all bent the rule a little bit so they they could have a bigger sandbox to play in. Well, that's one way of looking at it. I mean, look, the way I looked at it was like this. They said the pro. Uh, they said that uh, the Rise of Skywalker no- novelization provides a solution to the conundrum in the form of a passage Ray reads from the ancient Jedi texts. The Prime is one, but the Jedi are many. The Sith were many, but often merged, often emerged, ruled by two. Now this clarifies that while there are multiple Sith at any time. But they are ruled by the leading two. This scenario can be fit. So basically what Doc said in a hand basket. But it also explains what all those people on Exegol were doing. Who follow the Sith uh, religion, if you will. That these two individuals, Vader, Palpatine, uh, whoever. Are looked upon like, like demigods. You know what I'm saying? That rule the Sith. You know how they had the... Uh, I mean, this is how my interpretation. You know how they had uh, Max Van Cito, and he yeah. did, And you had the... He was part of the, the Church of the Jedi and followed the Jedi's teachings but wasn't Force-sensitive or Jedi. Yeah. Same thing with... Uh, uh, yes. Uh, and ch- the, the, Jimmy you know, Trimmer, yeah. Charlie Chan and Jimmy Chang and Charlie Chan, you know, many, uh, many, many, many Pacquiao. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Rogue One. So that's how I took it. I think they expanded on it. But let's speak to the Sith himself. What's your take on it? Uh, This is my take. If that article was written in the words that you guys explained it, I would have been like this: salute, Uh, you know, awesome. But that article was written by somebody who had nothing better to do, that doesn't know fucking Star Wars. Hey, Ryan Johnson? And, and was talking out of his ass. I would not be shocked if it was <laughs> him. But listen, man, the ruler too, okay. You know, it's like this guy, again, I feel like he wrote an article for the sake of writing one. They didn't put thought into it. Because there are many force users, light side dark side whether it's canon or not canon there were many factions of dark side users and even light side users okay um but in canon you know uh, again not everybody who was a dark side practitioner was a sith a lot of them weren't even affiliated to any you know i don't know if you want to call it sect or or a crew gang and shit you know So I don't think they rewrote anything. I don't know if that passage that Ray wrote, I I mean, it sounds like it was very specific and saying that, you know, that the two rule and and all that other shit. So maybe they did rewrite the rule. To me, I don't think they they did really. Um, I don't know. I think it's fucking dumb. Anyways. Spiro, I'm with you. It's like, so why can't you just have two Sith? And then have all these other dark force, you know, dark side of the force yeah. users. You don't have to be a Sith. I mean, exactly. not, not everybody's a fucking chief, but you could be a fucking Indian. I mean, well, it's not look, a big deal. I agree with well, you. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, but man. That's what and also, but, but also, let's not also forget that these motherfuckers themselves kept breaking the damn rule, man. You know, man, they would have a lot of these people and, you know, a lot of them actually had secret apprentices because... Wow. Listen, and, and a guys, guma on the side, a guma apprentice on the side. <laughs> yeah, guma, yeah. You know, they were like, hey, man, this guy's starting to get strong. I'm going to go train somebody else to have my back. Or the fucking apprentice himself had somebody else. Like, listen, man, you're going to help me take down this dude. I'm going to rule, okay? You'll be my new fucking, you know, um, 
apprentice and shit and you know blah 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 etc you know uh, and they pointed out and there's something about more that that more survived so you know apparently when um Sidious took on Dooku the rule was you know that that the rule there it, it didn't a, 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 like apply and shit first of all nobody knew that more lived okay you know well, he really didn't died. live he, he was dead they brought him back just because of the fact right. that uh, right. they wanted to yeah, so it's like they're fucking trying to say like this guy went, got got Dooku, and knew that Maul's still alive and shit. You know, again, this is another jerk off that doesn't know Star Wars and he's writing about Star Wars. And there seems to be this fucking trend these days from motherfuckers that don't know shit about shit writing about shit they shouldn't be fucking writing about. Listen. I didn't read it in detail. Obviously, it sounds like you did. I agree with you. Maul was out of the picture. Everyone thought he was dead. So he got replaced. Um, and to be frank... Who's Frank? Maul... Uh, <laughs> hey, Frank. Castle. No, Frank. <laughs> anyway, that's a little Scarface for you. Hey, Frank. Uh, a fucking Hassan. <laughs> so, um, what was I saying? Oh, Maul was a Sith Lord. Sidious is a Sith Lord. So you have your two. Maul gets 86 or 43 since he was cut in half. Right? <laughs> That's good math over there. Greeks invented math. That's right. And then he gets replaced by Dooku. Dooku becomes a, the uh, Sith Lord. So now there's two. So Dooku takes out an apprentice, uh, Asajj Ventress, but she's, not a, she's a dark side user. She's not a Sith Lord. Right. Then she gets allegedly cast out and thought to be dead. He takes on Savage Opress, who wasn't a Sith Lord. And then when Maul came back, Maul wasn't part of the Sith any longer. He felt betrayed and took Savage Opress. And then uh, Palpatine found out he was alive, felt he was a threat, killed uh, Savage Opress, took him, tortured him. That's the whole Son of Dathomir gimmick. And then, uh, what's his name? Even uh, General Grievous, who wasn't a Sith, was trained in the arts of uh, lightsaber combat by Dooku, right? One of the best lightsaber combatants ever. And he wasn't a Sith. The Inquisitors weren't Sith. They were just dark side users. Um, so I don't think anything's changed. I just think people will... I think this just adds credence to the people in Exegol in, in episode 9, when people were saying, who are all these people? Where do they come from? And why are they part of the Sith cult? Who are these people? Where do they come from? And how exactly. long have they been there? Well, then, then it makes sense. If they're going to be governed and ruled by two individuals, an apprentice and a master, a Sith Lords, and the rest are just freaking pawns on the freaking chessboard. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it also kills, you know. And if they're really doing that, it kills the whole thing about, you know... The, the the rule too is so that these people can hide and shit. Wait, you who know? who established the rule too? Uh, the rule two was established by Darth Bane, who got the idea from a holocron created by, yes, he is canon Darth Revan. But w one more thing, <laughs> real, real real quick, before you guys rip me the fucking shreds. Wait, wait a minute, does that article at all even mention the Night Sisters? I don't know. I didn't read it. No, I, I read it. it you see, you see, you see. But they're that? not Sith. They're not exactly, but they are dark side users. Oh yeah, of course. Who are not Sith? Exactly. Well, well Kylo's not Dathomir, a Sith. Dathomir, Dathomir, the planet itself is is like fucking dark side and shit. So, so is Dagobah. There you go, man. They don't know shit, man. Well, listen, who, who was this though? The the author. Oh, His name was uh, George Lucas. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, I take that back. No, who was this? <laughs> Hold on, let me take a look. This is from comicbookcbr.com. I'm gonna start a fucking uh, Alexander Sawa. S W. I'm gonna start shit now. S O W A. Okay. Um. So listen, it's Revenge of the Sith today. Revenge of the Fifth. Excuse me. Play on Revenge of the Sith. Fantastic movie. During that movie, I would say one of the greatest uh, plans have, which came to fruition, occurred. Order sixty six. 
and an article came out and they said, who are all the Jedi that survived? So mm -hmm. I figured we'd retouch base on some of these individuals and um, go down the list. What the hell? That is Jedi Master MC uh, Master Bates. Yes, Mr. Uh, Jedi Master Bates. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Is he People can't? who survived. Obviously, Yoda, Obi Wan, Taron Malakos, T A R O N M A L I C O S. Uh, Star Wars Jedi for Fallen Order. He was a Jedi general during the Clone Wars. He managed to survive Order 66 by fle fleeing to Dathomir, remaining and remaining in hiding. While on Dathomir, Malakos fell to the dark side and became the leader of the Knight Brothers. He deceived the yeah. Knight Sisters and tried to lure another Jedi survival, Cal Kestis, to the dark side. Cal resisted, defeated Malakos with the help of one of the Knight Sisters. Malako. Yeah, Malaka. <laughs> We buried uh, Malakos alive so. using Darth side magic. Look at that. Maul survived. We know that. Canon Jarrus survived, aka uh, Caleb Dune. Uh, Siri Junda, who is uh, captured by the Empire after Order 66, managed to escape. She severed her connection to the Force in order to stay safe. She never gave up on our mission to rebuild the Jedi Order. Uh, Sira later met Cal Kestis and rescued him from the Imperial Inquisitors. She then mentioned me mentored Cal in the ways of the Jedi. The Black Cal League, right? Yes. Yeah. The Cal Kestis, which is a Jedi Fallen Order guy, Ahsoka Tano, uh, and then another guy, Nak N A Q M E D. He was in a novel. M E T H O D, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you, you know my style. Uh, Nakhmed <laughs> was initiated into the Jedi. Wait, order wait, his name is Nakhmed? He's a no, Nak, N A Q, <laughs> Nakhmed. Was initiated into the Jedi Order, but left to find his own path sometime before Order 66 came down. He met a woman, fell in love, and had a family. He later learned of Order 66 and believed Palpatine's reports of a Jedi uprising. Then the Grand Inquisitor tracked him down. Med survived the fight and fled to the planet of Pamba, P A M apostrophe B A, where he, <laughs> where he remained for the rest of his life. During the era of the New Republic, Med's great grandson, Karnu Sin, tracked Med down. Med died with the knowledge that his family had survived and the Jedi were restored. Car took his great grandfather's robe and lightsaber and became a force collector. One who collects stories and artifacts related to the Jedi. Um, unconfirmed survivors. We have Coleman Kaj. Apo Rancisis. Apo Rancis. <laughs> that was the guy who looked, who looked like the snake. He had like the big furry beard. He was like super long. He looked like he had a snake body. I don't know. He was on the kills. Un Unvel. Quinlan Voss. Sir uh, Selrak Ilius. Oh, he's Can, Greek. I have no idea. Kam Moon Koli. He's Greek too. Yeah, that's it. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Cool, my cool, cool, my coolie. What's his name? Look, guys. Kam Moon Koli. Who's that? Can you see it? Yeah, I see it. Who's that? Master Soon Bates. But uh, according to this, he is not canon. It says here. Uh, like Revan. Like Revan. Ah, uh, come on, come on. Species human, gender male, hair color black and gray, affiliation Jedi Order, Galactic Republic. In the right place your heart was, but clouded by emotion was your judgment. Apparently before he went and, you know, slapped his monkey butt. Uh, How dare you which, assume his gender? He, he, uh, I'm sorry. He's not a uh, canon though, but there was a Master Bates though at one time. That's fucking you think great. someone did that as a rib? A hundred percent. Yes. Hundred percent. <laughs> Hell yeah. A hundred percent. Can you great. picture? Can you picture uh, Yoda uh, telling the the the, <laughs> the younglings, today you will be taught the power of the Force by Master Bates. <laughs> and all the little okay. kids going. <laughs> okay, younglings, gather round. I want you to pull out your lightsaber and stroke it up and down. 
And goosh, goosh, goosh. If you feel you're moving too fast, think about baseball. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, think about pod racing. Uh, <laughs> all right. So here, Spiro, I got to tell you something. We all know how great of a day yesterday was for Star Wars. Yes. Uh, man. Right? Yes. People still complain. Star Wars fans use May the 4th to send a message to Lucasfilm. Do better. Now. With what? I, well, let's see. Fans are using May the 4th to express gripes and make requests to Star Wars. An extremely popular franchise has a mixed history of issues with representation. The oh, first God. films contained progressive politics and made an icon of Leia, but put her in a bikini and had few minorities or other women. No, fans the problem, wanted, sorry. Hold man. on, hold on. Wait, fan, hold on. Fans wanted more of a storyline for Finn and protested the backlash and erasure of Rose Tico. Ooh. Fans who saw <laughs> Rose Tico. Never fans. Heard. Fans who saw Ben Solo as an abuse survivor objected to his death. Those who looked up to Ray were dissatisfied with her story conclusion. So I just want to bring it up to you today, Spiro, because I just want to get your take on this. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. Sit back. Ready? As shitty as Disney can be, the fans are a million times fucking worse, man. You know what? The NFO listeners, as much as you motherfuckers neglect us, you know, most of you do. You guys are probably the best Star Wars fans, and I wish all the other fans in the fandom were as great as you guys, okay? But let me tell you something. What, what exactly do you want Disney to do better, okay? Uh, listen, all they need to do is cut out the fucking politics and, yo, man, Star Wars will be back to where everybody loves it, okay? The problem isn't that they put Leia in, in a fucking bikini and this and that. You know, you know what the problem is, man? That nobody nowadays, okay, can knows how to fucking enjoy life, okay? Back then, people weren't so easily fucking offended by anything, not by stereotypes, racial, sexual, fucking trans fucking... Gender, you know, nobody gave a shit, man. Okay, everybody, yo, dude, black people would go to the movies and watch a black guy get his head blown off and, and fucking laugh. Okay, <laughs> nowadays, if you have a black person in a movie, even you know, calling a white person, sir, oh my god, I can't believe they did that. They just set the black people back 400 years, and it'll be a white person saying that shit. Okay? You know? So, you know, fans, okay, you guys may rule your domain that's your fucking basement where you fucking jack off to fucking Star Wars parody porn, but up here where the big people play and where even bigger people with deep Pockets rule, you know, at fucking Disney. All right? Stay out of that, okay? Nobody needs your fucking input, okay? If you want, go out and make the, the fucking movie you want to see. Go out and make it, okay? I won't see it, you know? If I see it, it'll probably be to fucking laugh at it and shit, you know? I'll take a big f fucking sh shit on it, maybe. But... Yo, really, people, you know, let's just fucking enjoy Star Wars. Let you me don't just like say the something. Fucking... <laughs> so keep going, keep going. I don't want to cut off your rant. Nah, right. man. Don't no, stop no, him no. while he's on a roll, you moron. I thought he was uh, done. No, you, you know, I mean, you know, I was going to cut it there because, you know, I, I'm fucking yeah, you starting. you pussy. Don't cut it. But yeah, you know what? Let me tell you something, bro. All right. <laughs> You know what? The coronavirus, and I'm sorry to anybody who's been affected by this. Okay, I've had people affected by it. I've been indirectly affected by it. But <clears throat> in a way, it might be a blessing in disguise because a lot of you stupid motherfuckers who are, who are fucking talking about how Star Wars is this and that are the same idiots who are talking about, you can't tell me to stay home. You know what, asshole? Go outside. Go go and lick a fucking handrail 
at the fucking subway station, asshole. Go do that shit and see. See what happens. You know, you want to fucking, you know, try it out? Try it out, you know? You know, if this virus could just fucking kill the fucking stupid people, guess what? Oh, God, that'd be amazing. We win. We no, we'd win. lose because we wouldn't have any fans left. <laughs> oh, oh God, that's terrible. Listen. So, Doc, let, let me just say this to, 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 to uh, chime on Spiro's rant. In wrestling, a good worker knows how to motivate the crowd, right? Get them yeah. emotionally vested into the uh -huh. match that wrestler's in. So one good thing that a person could do, especially a heel who's a ring general like your boy GGP, he knows how to make the baby face look like a million dollars and build a sequence of moves to lead to either a great finish or a great false finish and keep the match going. We I call it building on the pop. So we just got a nice pop from, from Spiro. I want to build off that pop to get a higher pop. So please, Doc, enlighten us on your topic that you wanted to get a little rational rage on okay so this happened to best. me oh you're gonna love this one spiro this happened to me i'd say now maybe a year and a half ago somewhere around there so toys r us had, i was closing they were having a blowout sale so Did you i get bought, the counseling for that i i should have actually i'm still having the uh, repercussions <laughs> for it right now um and i picked up one of the motorized land speeders from my son Grayson, the, the little one. He's too small for it, but it doesn't matter. I'll still stick him in it anyway. So it was eight hundred bucks, and it was on sale for like seventy five percent off, eighty percent off, and it was like a hundred bucks, right? The thing is enormous. It's like four and a half feet long. It's massive. I don't have a big backyard in Brooklyn, guys. Sorry, um, but I bought it anyway. Took it home. We fired the fucking thing up. We brought it to the park that's right around the corner from me, and I let him drive around in it. So as he's driving around in it, some dad with his kid, similar age, shows up. The kid loves the thing. He jumps in it. They're driving together. They're taking turns, blah, blah, blah. So I start talking to this guy. I'm like, oh, you're a big Star Wars fan? He's, yeah, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. You know, my son's enormous. He loves the movies. I've been making him watch them. The kid probably was like, I don't know, three, four. I'm like, oh, that's pretty great. So we're kind of hitting it off. He's like, I got to get me one of these things. Where'd you get it from? We're going back and forth. And then we keep talking about Star Wars. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you know, he really loves the movies, but... Uh, you know, I had to make him watch a version that was a little bit, you know, easier for him to watch. And I said, what do you mean easier for him to watch? He goes, well, you know, one of my friends is like an editor. So I had him take, you know, all six, seven, but at that point, you know, eight movies. And I had him take out all the violence and then I made him watch it. And I said, uh, excuse me? So what I did he watch, really? I said, Grayson, pull, pull that land speeder over here. We're getting the fuck out of here. These two bitches, I, we, we ain't going to hang out with anymore. Yeah, kick that <laughs> pussy the fuck out of your fucking speeder. Come on. <laughs> and I sat there and I said, you, this movie's, first of all, Star, Star Wars is old, 43 years old at this point, okay? Um, well, now, but at that, it was 41 years old. We all cut our teeth on it. M my dad didn't sit there and take out half the fucking movie for me. I'm sure your dads didn't do that as well. I'm sure your mothers didn't even have a fucking inkling to do something like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. let's call a spade a spade. You shouldn't be showing Star Wars to a fucking two-year-old. Okay, I, I agree with you. Two, two year old though. Why not? Yeah. Because then they get indoctrinated and they get uh, to the point where they think blasting someone with a blaster is okay or chopping, a, <laughs> chopping someone who disagrees with you's hand off is okay because they think they see it on TV. They don't know so. any better. This Some kid was soul. at least four to four or five, somewhere around there. Well, that's it's still too young. Decent, in my a, a decent age where you, where you can get it. I disagree. All right, guys, it's been a great run. I've done a, <laughs> a year and two episodes, plus all these other fucking things you guys dragged me into. Love you, Pop, but you're a bitch. Episode anyway, seven tell. rocked, bro. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service. Pop it up. This, this, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go upstairs to your bedroom, down. okay? <laughs> I, I, I know your wife is probably watching The Bachelor or up there or something like that. I want you to go there, and on the mantle or in her purse, one or the other, is your fucking testicles that she took from you about 25 years ago. I want you to fucking gather them up, okay? <laughs> Dust them off and tuck them back in your fucking scrotum, all right? And then come back downstairs and talk to me. Uh, uh, listen, go on. if you show your kids something, okay, this is it's not gratuitous Fucking faces, you know, uh, faces of fear, fucking violence. 
uh, faces of death violence where you know people's heads are getting fucking exploded and all that. Faces bullshit. of fear, I'm like Tom, yeah, yeah. fucking Haku, <laughs> fucking barbarian. barbarian. Oh shit! It just faces of me. death. Faces, faces of, of death. <laughs> Listen, it's <laughs> fantasy simulated violence. You have to explain to them at some point. Okay, this is the movies. This is what happens with that you know knowledge coming in. But you don't take a movie like Star Wars. And rip out all the parts that make it Star Wars, and then show it to this fucking watered down, neutered version of this movie it's to this kid who thinks he's getting Star Wars. He's gonna go to he's gonna go to school and be like, "Oh, I saw Star Wars." Oh, where's your lightsaber? What the fuck's a lightsaber? Because they chopped off a fucking fish's fucking hand with a goddamn thing in the first movie. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? I was Can like, you like, imagine that? Damn. How, how much of the movie did they show this kid? Like. Uh, I want to go to I want to go I want to go to Toshi Station uh, and then them, them celebrating at the end. I don't understand. Like, where was this? Where, where, where? If you want to like, maybe cover his eyes when Aunt Peru and Uncle Owen are fucking getting a little toasty in the oven, that's great. But like, really? Like, I don't. I don't get. I looked at the guy. I wanted to fucking slap him in his face. Hey, kid, watch <laughs> this. I'm gonna beat your dad to death. Yeah, I dude. Couldn't fucking believe it. I could not fucking believe it. Blew Bro, my mind. You know what, man? If if you'd have fucking pulled out your fucking Jesus, keys. Spiro, question, Spiro, yeah. I'm sorry. Why did you edit the movies? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you edit the movies? Hey, man, say it was you all along. Guys, guys, come on, man. Stay it was me, Austin, all along. Listen, man, if you pulled out your fucking keys and went straight to his juggler, you would have done that kid a fucking favor, bro, okay? Because let me tell you something, A New Hope, I, like you, you, you fucking said, imagine him going to school. Hey, man, hey, guys, great film, right? Oh, my God, what a celebration. Yeah, did you see anything else prior to that? Fucking, um... He drank some milk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah, man, great film. Darth Vader, the way he fucking stepped into that damn hallway in, in the I snow. What happened after that? You know, and the, the, what a way to end the damn film, guys, right? Oh, my God. Yo, what? It's like, listen, if you're going to do this shit, you might as well keep your fucking kid home, man, okay? I understand. I understand there's certain things you don't want to show a kid, okay, at a certain age, but... You're not showing him Rambo. Listen, man, I was in first grade, I think. My dad played the Betamax fucking Scarface, and I saw everything. And that explains, it was that explains a lot. I probably, I think, I think I agree with you. Now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> it was me, say, my mother, my vote. me, my mother, my sister, who was four maybe and shit. No, no, uh -uh. yeah, four. Anyways. But Spiro's dad's like, uh, you motherfuckers all gonna watch this shit right now, okay? Because this is my life right here. All right. My I'm life gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how I came up the power. <laughs> Why you guys eat the fucking food you eat right now, okay? Dude, I'm telling you. No, but look, man, in all honesty, but Star Wars, I don't think is one of those things where you, you need to really keep a fucking kid sh sheltered. I mean, okay, maybe you, you wanna do like Pop said, man. Cover the eyes, maybe when more gets cut in half or some shit. But even still, man, there's no gore, bro. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm I mean? not, no it's not the gore. It's not the gore. I look, I said I let my son watch Rebels when he was three and a half, almost four years old, right? Right. And for three days, he's going around going pew pew pew. I'm gonna shoot you in the head. I'm gonna shoot you in the head. The wife heard it. Oh <laughs> boy, did I turn into a jobber real quick? And we of had to eighty six it because. He thought it was okay to be shooting people in the head because he saw Kane and Jarris and Rex and uh, Cam, you know, sh shooting people, you know, shooting stormtroopers. <laughs> so, you know, I understand that after my what my wife said, kids don't understand the rationale. So, is Star Wars for children? Absolutely, but the age of the children, in my opinion, is probably around six, seven, or older. You know what I mean? Like. When his seventh year birthday is coming in a month, and I'm gonna show him episode four, and he's all excited. He done known the story already. He we I've told him a million times exactly what happens. He knows Vader's Luke's dad. He knows all about the prequels. Okay, all right. You know all right. because we read all the golden books. 
you right. know? And he we've seen clips online of Dooku versus Vader. I mean, Dooku versus Yoda and all that stuff. You know what I mean? So, like, I won't be able to show him episode three right away because that's a little dark. You know what I mean? We have see Anakin right, right. burning up. And I told him that. I said, I won't show you that part. He goes, I can take it, Dad. I'm a big boy. Look, it is what it is. You know what I mean? But yeah. to but at the same time, I kind of agree with Doc because we grew up watching all this stuff. We didn't watch it at four years old, but a little older. Like I remember being like nine years old, ten years old, watching uh, Indiana Jones been, T- Temple of Doom. Six, maybe. Yeah. You know, Temple of Doom, where the guy's ripping out his heart, going Kalima Shakti Day, Om Nam Shiva, Om Nam Shiva, Om Nam Shiva, Om Nam Shiva. You know. And then you hear fucking uh, short round. Indy, cover your heart. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, know bro, like bro. And, and look at you. You're a fine upstanding citizen. Yeah, bro. Absolutely. Look, bro, I, I'll be honest. You know, if you're going to do that, then I think you're probably doing it the best way. But but why even bother show this kid? This I agree with you. Don't show it at all. Don't show it at all. Yeah, it's like. I'll tell you this, though. When that kid gets old enough according to his dad to see that shit and 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 he actually sees you know i can see him now he goes to fucking best buy he, and, and he buys the fucking nine films the box set excite oh my god this is gonna take me back to my childhood my dad introduced me and when he's like yo this film man what it's like this film Seems to be a lot longer than. And yeah. he's, he's like, wait a minute, an hour and forty-five minutes. What the one the I saw was thirty-three this? minutes. <laughs> Maybe you know, you know, he's gonna gain probably a whole new. Okay, he's either gonna gain a whole new appreciation and love f- for it and become a super diehard fan, or he's gonna need help, bro. He's gonna but, need fucking professional help. Well, listen, oh. I saw a movie called Parental Guidance. It's a good movie. Marissa Tomei. And uh, Billy Crystal, right? Billy Crystal's like the grandfather. Marissa Tomei is the parents, right? Marissa Tomei does not let her kids see violence or eat sugar or do anything like that. So, like, Billy Crystal comes and starts watching the kid. They watch Saw together, right? (laughs) All right, that's a little extreme. (laughs) Right? He didn't know. (laughs) So, he tries to bribe him by buying ice cream cake. You know what I'm saying? So, when they come home, the mother... Sees that there's ice cream cake. The daughter, the oldest daughter, like flips out. She's yelling at the father in the yard. She comes in the back and they're down in the ice cream cake. She's like, You lied to me. Ice cream doesn't taste like yogurt. You know, it's just hilarious. And she's covered head to toe in like Carvel ice cream cake. That's what happens, dude. When you protect your children too much and they get a taste of that non innocent evilness. Yeah. They either rebel or they go full fledged. They go full retard. <laughs> you should never go full retard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So oh, it, man. it's what happens when you try to protect like your kids, you know, like your daughters from dating. And then they become sluts. Mm-hmm. Or you tell your kids, you know, you can't watch this movie. You can't. You can't. You know, eat red meat. You can't do this. You can't smoke cigarettes. You get. You get. I'm not saying. Let your kids do that. Tell them why it's bad, but yeah. hide it from them and not letting them know the pros and especially the cons. Of, of Gotta what teach them. Yeah. yeah. Educate them, man. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Not hide it from them. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's like, if that's the case, why don't you just raise your kid living in a bubble? You know? Yep, 100%. So. Yeah, man, absolutely, man. You know, uh, yeah, that dude, man, if you ever see him again at, at the park, I'm just going to say this. Accidents happen, man. You know? yeah. Doc, uh, I would say smack him, but you wouldn't smack him. But if you are going to do anything, let it, I'll let you know right now, uh, Spiro and I will be right there to pull him right off of you. So don't worry about Thanks. it. Thanks. I appreciate it. You know, I'm really worried about that. You might yeah. want to see your feet. Yeah, send me a picture of your feet. So, I can see it now, man, on, on the news. In Brooklyn... At a park, a man was repeatedly run over by a Star Wars speeder. <laughs> just, just dragged from Brooklyn at three miles an hour, <laughs> yelling, "Are these a droid you're looking for, motherfucker? <laughs> you don't need to see my identification." 
<laughs> oh, God. Yeah, Listen, God. man, that guy's not over. But speaking about over, we do a segment here on the New Force Order for you first-time listeners who are still with us after all the shenanigans that we do. It's called Who is More Over? We compare two aspects of Star Wars. Now, I know what you guys are saying. Well, that doesn't make grammatical sense. What do you mean, who's more over? What's over? Well, it's wrestling terminology. It's wrestling lingo. When you're a wrestler and you're a good guy, you're known as the baby face. And when you're over as a baby face, that means you're very popular with the fans. And they love you to death. They'll pay an, an exuberant amount of money to come see you kick the crap out of the bad guy. But when you're the bad guy, you're known as the heel. And you're over with the fans as a heel. People love to hate you. To the point where they're going to spend a numerous amount of Scott Oll to come see you get your ass kicked. Now, what we do, we compare two aspects of Star Wars culture. Whether it's a person, place, or thing, doesn't matter. And we, yeah, we see what, who's more over with you, but most importantly, who, who's more over with us. So, Doc... Enlighten these MILF makers and let them know who who our participants are today. Is it okay if I'm a MILF milk, milker? Because I, I don't I don't milf, find milf, what did I say, I, MILF milker? You said you said MILF milker. Oh, did I? Wolf I, I, don't, I, I don't mind milking a, a MILF here and there, by the way. You know, they're all right. Anyway, um okay. so our combatants this week, we went back to the uh, the planetary uh, portion of the show, and we're looking at two different Backdrops for the Star Wars universe, both extremely important <clears throat> for our story. So, number one is the Lando Calrissian run Cloud City versus the upscale, the top side, as if you will, um, that we've seen in many, many portions of the Star Wars universe of Coruscant. All right, Doc. Yes. We've been doing this for over a year. You want me to kick it with the polls? Yes, here we go. Okay. So. Yes! Jesus All right. Christ. Um, oh, interesting. 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 Let's see here. Uh, I got to I gotta just look at the... Okay. I'm just trying to calculate them up over here. Hold on. Sorry. Um, all right. So, John Enright, John Enright comments. I'm going to give you the comments first. I am more of a country guy, so Cloud City for me. Away from it all, isolated, iconic look, and the ability to provide for yourself. Curson is just a big old city that encompasses a planet. No thank you. Uh, Holly Garland says a comment with uh, the YouTube video for Crap City on Robot Chicken. And then we have the votes. Uh, if you add John's vote for Cloud City, it is three votes to two votes. Cloud City is over. Cloud City, huh? Indeed. Beat the first. <clears throat> so five people voted. That's what you're telling me. You I see, this voted. is... You made all three is... of our fans make us look smaller than we actually are. I love it. So, so this... Oddly enough, 128 people uh, that this post reached, as Yoda would say. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, these fuckers don't want to vote. I, I'm, I'm going to make you guess who voted. Let's see. Can you guess? Chuchi oh. and so right. So Enright Enright did didn't vote. He he left a comment, but so in in, in lieu of co voting, he commented. Gotcha. It wasn't Chuchi. He didn't vote. Nope. Damn man, when we lose somebody like him, we're in trouble then. Dusty Timbo, right? Okay, Tim, Timbo, uh -huh. we know. Uh, Holly, and yeah. my boy, and my boy Tom Missler. All right, whatever. Thank you, thank you. We have a son comments. of a bitch. That was the comments, comments that I had. That was the comments I had there. On the website. Do we have anything from the website? I, I have a, an email. I have a message, but it's not related to this. All right, we'll save that for last. Yeah. Let's go through the email. Our first email is from the 88th homeboy, Moses Sandoval, and it's titled Chuchi Get the Yayo. What's up, NFO? But, but was it me or did GGP sound so hyper on last week's NFO? Did I? I don't know. Spiro, Doc, am I crazy? Well, that led me to create another haiku. Oh, haiku oh. number two for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, this is going to be a good one, I guess. Todd, get the yayo. Shit, who's knocking on the dough? I see three po or po. Three, three po. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I see three po. 
Ah, very clever. Good uh, shit. Pop it on. Hold on. It's P A P A D O N, man. That's how I spell my name. That you spelled it all incorrect. If you're gonna spell my name, spell it right there, uh, homeboy. Um, put some pop respect on my name. Oh, what the hell is this? Oh, from Scarface. Pop it on. Calmate, coño, man. <laughs> What's calmate mean? Relax. Calm down. Relax, oh. yeah. Anyways, peace out, homeboys. Revan's not canon. <laughs> Send for my iPhone. All right. Oh, and we have email <clears throat> from our first time emailer, Tim Gilby. Hey, NFO guys, this week I'm picking Cloud City. I love the atmosphere. It just looks <laughs> like a dream. <laughs> that was a, a space joke. <laughs> get it, get it. <laughs> if you're watching along on YouTube, the face pop that I just gave you was fucking priceless. <laughs> All right, let's take two here, guys. Hey, NFO guys, this week I'm picking Cloud City. I love the atmosphere. It just looks like a dream being so bright and clean. To me, Coruscant just looks dirty and polluted. I wouldn't want to live there. No offense, but I couldn't live in New York City either. Thanks for last week's episode. I don't blame two you. Great, two great guests on one awesome show. All right. Hey, guys. All right. Well, right. I'll ask you later. Todd Santiago. Who is more over? <clears throat> Simple. I know where I can get some death sticks, Coruscant, versus Bespin, a.k.a. Cloud City. Was a tough tough choice? Coruscant by a little for me. Thanks, NFO guys. NFO for life. So, I guess he's a big druggie then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, yeah. Here's another one by Homeboy88. Uh, for This one's Coruscant versus Cloud City. Uh, thank you, GGP, for mentioning who's more over at the end of Clone Wars podcast. I really don't have any social media apps. That's because there's no Wi-Fi on, on, on the highway, so I totally understand. <laughs> 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 and fucking oh, Sprint, Sprint PCS service sucks. <laughs> oh, man. I really don't have any social media apps, and there is a reason for that, but I might explain later. Oh, I am chomping at the bits to hear this. Oh. Anyways, Coruscant, <laughs> is, <laughs> Coruscant is like New York City and Tokyo combined, and Cloud City is like Atlantic City. Even though I drink Colt 45 like Billy D, I got to say like the Sheik, fuck the Cloud City, baba. P.S. Everybody go and watch... Beastie Boy story on Apple TV. I was a huge fan of License to Ill and still play yeah. that shit. Peace out, homeboys. Listen, Beastie Boys are no joke, man. They're my top five as far as groups go 100%. of all time. I'll let you I'll let you know. I'll let you know, Moses, that I actually saw that show live in the King Theater in Brooklyn a year and a half ago. It was fucking amazing. Dope. Next one. Angelo Andrews. Coruscant versus Cloud City. And then he says, see attachments. Two attachments. Okay. Uh, What's naked pick? pics? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, he, he put uh, yeah. he put it with the emojis. Because the fucking guy, Andrew Andrews, is like acting like a 16-year-old teenage girl. He's fucking talking in emojis now. He has a croissant. Or is that a half moon? I can't even tell. Over a, moon? a cloud. So I guess he's saying Coruscant over Cloud City. And then <laughs> send me a picture. <laughs> Obi Wan. Look at this. Ready? I don't know if you guys can see it. No, I can't see it. The fuck is that? It's, it's, too, uh, it's a cannoli. With a, hold on. It's a, oh. a uh, Obi Wan cannoli. Yeah. Obi -Wan cannoli. All right, there, Angelo Andrews. Or should That's I call you Angela? Because you're acting like a fucking cunt. Anyhow. <laughs> yeah, fucking cunt. <laughs> Yeah, bitch. Is that it, potentially the greatest word of the English language, by the way? What? Uh, the, word word. the word cunt. Only when it's said by somebody from the UK <clears throat> or from Australia. Because yeah. it's like a term of endearment. It's you know? quite a, and it's also got quite the, you know, the twang on it when they do yeah. it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Cunt. Anyway, next one's from Hans. Planet Vital. And it's funny because I, I I looked at the emails and I said I I text Hans. I said Hans, no email this week. He was like, Oh shit, it's Tuesday. So anyhow, Cloud City hands down. Wow, Land. He's a big uh, prequel guy. So I really thought he was gonna go Coruscant. Lando is a pimp and his spot is booming, especially since the deal he cut right before Han showed up. How do we all? Like the last two episodes of the Siege of Mandalore, I really enjoyed the lack of dialogue and the score they played throughout. Epic. Well, Hans, <laughs> just so you know, we do a show called The Clone War Report, where we go over every episode this season of The Clone Wars. And if you were a true fan, you would buy merch from newforceorder.com and you would go back and see the episodes or listen to the episodes because they are available on YouTube through our page, New Force Order, and they're also available on all our, the platforms that podcasts are available on. But you can also go to the website, which is newforceorder.com, and get the backlog of episodes, you fucking cunt. Anyway. <laughs> so, he goes, I have one problem at the end, though. Not sure if I'm tripping or not. I feel for lonely, would not let this slide. When Ahsoka dropped the lightsaber at the end, it was on the ground. The helmets on the sticks were about her height, five to six feet. When Vader found her saber, it was at the same level as the helmets in the snow. Did I miss something? Like Vader pulled it from under the snow. I am Patriot still on lock. Well, what do you guys have to say about that? Uh, Didn't he be able to that's... pick it up? Yeah. Uh, I could have Yeah, sworn. I thought he did. Yeah. Well, look, man. Let's let's look at facts here. <clears throat> have you guys ever seen a wind, uh, I mean, a snowstorm or snow in general? When you have an object like a car or a truck parked on the side of the road or a shack like a garage in your backyard and the wind pushes the snow, it leans up against that object, and it's usually higher. Those people were buried in front of the, the crashed uh, ship, right? If I remember correctly, the ship yeah. was in the... So this, I would think the snow would be on an, on, a, on an incline from the wind blowing it towards the ship. You know what I mean? Because there's nowhere to go. Right. So, drift. Yeah, it's like a drift. So maybe that's it. If not... If you're going to dwell on something that little, Hans, I would yeah, say exactly. get out of your house, get some vitamin D, get in the you've sun. Been, you've been on quarantine too long, boy. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yo, but uh, how long do we have to wait for the fucking comic book or visual encyclopedia that's going to explain to us on what planet that shit happened? Probably uh, not. That's my fucking question because well, they love the to it do was the a shit. Moon. A fucking moon, a planet, my, my nuts. I mean, it's the same shit. You know what I'm saying? But Disney loves loves to fucking do this shit, you know. So if there's something they can do better, is 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 this shit? You know what I'm saying? Fucking, you know, explain it to us, you know. Hey. You know, don't make me go out and and, and spend, you know, my uh, cash on, on a book or a fucking you know tin foil fucking some shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, come on. Anyway, sorry. Fuck. It's all right, man. <laughs> We love the rant, Spiro. We love him. So that's that is who's more over this week. You no, 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 it's not. We didn't give our our picks. Well, I don't think we should give our picks. Fuck the fans. They, they don't, don't want to vote, sir, man. You know, listen, man. I've said this before. You know, they wanted the fucking website. They wanted the fucking merch. They wanted the this. They can't even vote, man. You know what? They don't deserve to fucking know shit, man. Fuck them. Anyways. <laughs> You want to talk about uh, the the last e email that we got? Yeah, sure. please do. Well, who do you think it's it's from? Uh, Chuchi Santiago, uh, the eighty eighth homeboy, and winner, Greek god Papa Dizzy. You know who I knew? What? Huh? Because you said it last night. <laughs> when oh, that's what I did, right? <laughs> that's true. Oh, I was busy man. painting. 
Yo, it's either it's it's either a full moon. He was or working on Hank's McCoy shaft. I yeah, finished Hank so long ago. It's there's either a full moon tonight or or it is the fifth of May, my friends. But uh, here we go. Okay, it's the sixth of May right now, actually. But. Is it? Oh, uh, it is, huh? Uh, that still counts. Fuck them. What? Okay, what up, Spiro, GGP, and yes, Doc, or should I say the Butcher, the Blade? And the bunny. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, shit. That's fucked up. Uh, Papa yeah. thought he called you the bunny. <laughs> well, I'm boys with uh, the bunny and the blade because I used to team with him. Peppa Parks. He, with Peppa Parks in CZW. And it was the Greek, the body, and the babe. Or no, no, the bomb. She was the, she was the cherry bomb. She was going as cherry bomb at the time. Yep. So it was the Greek, the body, and the bomb. So, anyway. So he good says, people, here, "Good people." He says here, "I will not shelter in place." Capital N O T. I guess he's not gonna sh- shelter in fucking place then. Well, he can't in- sell. He can't sell his oranges from his house. Exactly. Yeah. That bro, yo, homeboy eighty eight. You set yourself up f- for that one, bro. Instead, it will be like the song out of Dr. Dre, "The Chronic," which said, "How many homies are ready to loot?" So what you want to do, what you want to do. Anyways, may the fourth be with you. I will be watching Estar Guars. Oh. Estar Estar Guars. Estar Guars. Estar Guars. Estar Guars. Nintendo. Cheerios. (laughs) Luke Skywalker. That day, yes, I heard that shit on the one podcast after GGP said execute homeboy eighty eight. I was I was pissed, but laughing at the same time. And of uh, course, he can't help himself. Revan's not canon. Homeboy what do you have to be pissed about, bro? Come on, do we have to call you up again and put you in your fucking place? Come on, dude, it's a joke. Don't get pissed, man. Homeboy, we say, we say it out of love. Homeboy eighty eight man, homeboy eighty eight's on on point. I think he should be our uh, new unofficial official something. You know. Well, listen, the NWO had the uh, <laughs> had the uh, <laughs> LWO, so he could be the LFO, the Latin Force Order. <laughs> oh, shit. He could be the first member of the LFO. He could be yeah. all the members of the LFO. Yeah. <laughs> you know, him and Chuchi. <laughs> Yo, 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 Chuchi, homeboy, eighty-eight. You guys need to link up and fucking start a fucking show, man. You know. Hilarious. <laughs> the, uh, LFO, the Latin Sports that Order. That's fucking awesome. Uh, oranges by the wayside. It could be called. <laughs> oranges by the wayside. <laughs> Dude, I would watch that shit. I would tune in straight up, man. No, no fucking lie. Okay, so Doc. Yes, sir. We had a, something called a contest, and it's over now. So please announce to the viewers, all three of them, to the listeners, all three of them, who won and the outcome. Speaking of over, uh, I think Cloud City's more over. But anyway, moving on. Um, you so pussy. We did- you don't go against the family. We said we weren't going to talk about it. You had to get your shit in, right? All right, so let's do over now. Why is Cloud City over? Uh, it doesn't matter why it's over. <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth, you fucking jabroni. Anyhow, tell them about the contest. Uh, so our contest was a Zori Bliss contest. Um, and we were giving away a Zori Bliss black figure, black series figure, six inch, that I accidentally bought two of. Um, we stretched this contest out for three months. You know why I bought two of them? Because it said six inch in black. You got all excited. That's right. Of course. You know, and they, they sent me the wrong product. Uh, you know, uh, so we stretched it out over two He's months, trying to get two and a half cloud months. City. <laughs> yeah. No, what? What is it? He's trying to get the cloud city. He was trying to get himself the cloud city. He wanted to be high in the clouds. Yeah, with 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 the, with the original uh, black double inch. Anyway, um, we picked. I picked the winner last night. Random number generator, and it was J Rizzy. What number was it? Number ten, I believe. J J Riz Mini, <laughs> who is our buddy John Enright. Nice, congratulations, congratulations. John Enright. Well deserved. Thank you, you know, for being a, a listener. 
And John and John played the numbers. He he entered about six times. So that was that, that was a John smart is the man, bro. Boy, you by know, him. Another one of our few loyal listeners. You know, some of you other people who fucking claim to like us, and you know what? You might think I'm not paying attention to, to who's doing what. I fucking see you, okay? But anyways. John, John and Wright, thank you for uh, being there for us, supporting us, and congratulations, man. You know, thank you. That will be going out to tomorrow, Johnny. John, it, it just real quick, congratulations. But if the figure smells like shit, it's because <laughs> Doc put it up his ass yeah. before he sent it to you. So just FYI, yeah. you might want to get a bottle of sanitizer and sanitize that thing down. That was part of the contest we didn't talk about. Sorry. Fucking scratch and sniff have. fucking figure. <laughs> <laughs> you should have you should have read the fine print, kid. Sorry. <laughs> oh oh shit, man. All right. So that was over. I think it's time we take him to sexy town. Yeah, yeah. It was time. It's time. It's time. It's wah wah wee wah time. Kama Sutra. All right, so let's see. Here's the Kama Sutra. In uh, in honor, no, we did that one already, so we can't do we can't do five five four for Mar- for May fifth, or we can't do five five because it's basically the same page. That was the slave layer where J- where Jabba had shoved Prince's layer up his up his ass, so we couldn't do that one. Um, any number that's jumping out on us, that's gonna. I know. What the... How about sixty? Sixty. All right, let's see sixty. I don't know. We did sixty. That was disturbance of the force. How about lucky number 13? 13. Uh, we've buzzed through most of this book already. Oh, here's a good one. Oh, this is all, all right. right. Actually, I, you know what? We did 13, which is Attack of the Clones, which they're all well, banging each we... other. But, but, but I'm going to go 14 right after. Right. Okay. Oh, the price was right. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> so this one stars uh, Admiral Akbar, which is very timely for our last episode of Who's Moreover. And the Wookiee Warrior from Revenge of the Sith, which was you know, the unnamed Wookiee Warrior. We can call him Lumpy if you like. This one's called It's a Crap. And it basically stars Admiral Akbar with his hands up in the air, the watching fuck? the very large Wookiee Warrior uh, taking a shit on Admiral Akbar's deck in his uh, private personal golden toilet bowl. Um, aka, it's a crap. It's a crap. Do you think he wipes? Uh, yeah, with a his own fur. Smaller, smaller (laughs) Wookies. That reminds me of a of a joke. Uh, The rabbit one. Yeah, (laughs) the rabbit and the bear in the woods. You ever hear that one, Doc? That's a hundred years old. That joke. (laughs) So I figured you heard it because you're like five hundred years old. (laughs) Would you would you like to tell it regardless? No, fans don't deserve it. I was going to just tell you. You know Fuck. what, man? But you you got to play the baby face and go. Eh, eh, the Cloud City's over, guys. Please love me, hate them, love me, please. Oh, man, uh, so the I'm lack of a... love, the lack of love that we've been getting. We should just stop this show right now. They don't deserve to hear our fucking voices, okay? And those who go on YouTube. You know what, man? Some of you deserve to see our fucking lovely faces and listen to our lovely voices. But some of you lately, man, I, I don't know, man. You guys need a special 4D version where I reach out and slap the shit out of you, man, really. But anyways, <laughs> I love you. I love you, but, you know, it's tough love, guys, you know? Anyways, sorry, slap Doc. Slap a vision. Yes. Slap a vision? Wasn't that in the movie? Anyway. Um, uh, you, you slap your vision. You know what that That's leads cool. this into right now? You know uh, what time it's you know wait. what time it's for? Is uh, it time, guys? Is I it? It's time. For? For ta. Doc to play the baby ta. face. Oh. Ta. 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 Toin. 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 Please love me. Please love me. Cut <laughs> city over. Please love me. All right. So I, I've been busy this week, boys. You, you guys saw my uh, Yoda that I posted that I that I made that the custom awesome. so, with Yoda. My custom uh, Yoda, my meditating Yoda. Yoda. There he goes. That shit right is there, awesome. Mr. Meditating Yoda. Along with the yeah. Tatooine. Turn the camera on. 
Tatooine, no. meditating Yoda. What did you use to make his hair? I used uh, one of my wife's uh, makeup <laughs> removers, you know, the, the, the little discs, the little discs. I cut it in half and I pulled did out the fur. Just, was that it? <laughs> yeah. I pulled that's out the top. Uh, that's some uh, bleached, you know, <laughs> stuff is this. Yeah, you listen, you got to do what you got to do, man. It was already white, so I took it. Uh, anyway, so Did before we go into it, oh, she doesn't care. You know, this is a small little like a uh, throwaway one. And if she did, I'm a man. I'm, a, you know, what my testicles are my fucking scrotum. Okay. Shit, Doc. We talked about that already. Turn around, Doc. Oh fuck. <laughs> she, she, she's at work till at least two o'clock in the morning, which is good. Um, that's what she tells me. Comes home smelling Sorry. like fucking Jägermeister. Um, so. Oh man, man, who still drinks Jägermeister? It's fucking 2020, bro. Not 1997. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, so <laughs> May 4th, May 4th has, has come and gone. And uh, Hasbro dropped a few releases on us that they're going to come out in the very near future. Um, one of them was the fan vote number four, which was the Luke Skywalker in, in, in his Dagobah outfit. Which basically, you know, is the fucking Dago by you fucking which guy. which has the uh, you know the tank top like Papa was wearing a little while ago took it off. So he had the tank top on. Uh, he looks all dirty, and they were like, you know what? We you can't just give you Luke by himself. So they're including the backpack and a brand new sculpt of Yoda. So we're getting both, and Yoda actually can you can pull his legs off and fit him in the backpack, and Luke has the ability to actually stand on his hands and and levitate on one hand, which is pretty dope if you were able to pose him that well. Um, so that's coming out in September. They also discuss the new carbonized figures that they have. They made you know a couple of the classic figures, like the masked figures, like the Mandalorian and the Jet Trooper, in this kind of pearl carbonized um, sheen. They're doing Darth Vader. They're doing Boba Fett, which was which was announced a couple of uh, about a month and a half ago. Boba um, Fett, where? Where exactly? But Vader was the uh, the one they announced this week. They're doing uh, from from the 40th anniversary, the six inch on the old school vintage card. They're doing Forlom and Zuckus, so two of the bounty hunters, and they're doing them in the old school Kenner colors and the Kenner style. So basically, when they were released by Kenner, the names were actually flipped. So Forlom, who is a robot in reality, that's his real name. He was labeled the Zuckus, and then vice versa with the actual Zuckus. So they're going to release them like that. Like old school, where the, where the names are fucked up. Um, they released the the images of the new prototype of the white Boba Fett um, prototype helmet, so that's coming out as well. They a slew of Baby Yoda merchandise, which by the way has hit stores. Yo, Baby Yoda is in stores. The child, um, he has been spotted. So there's a bunch of shit. Also, they're also doing a 40th anniversary six inch Han Solo in carbonite on the card, and it's just the carbonite block. It doesn't have a figure with it. They haven't released that since like 2007, I think, when they initially started the wave um, of Black Series. So it's, uh, yes, it's uh, some good stuff coming out. Anyway, moving on to the to the main attraction. Pop Don getting a little restless over there. So according to, according to Homeboy, I'm very uh, excited to be here. So yeah, we're only going to do one thing today. And I figured let's make it a cool one. So I got this this week. Straight off the the truck, thanks homeboy eighty eight. Uh, it's the Mandalorian vehicle, the Imperial Troop Transport. So we've seen this on a couple of shows. Um, one being the Mandalorian, and the other pop. You'll be very very happy to know that I started watching Rebels this week. I'm about five episodes in, nice, and this is nice. actually in the last episode that I watched in season one. They use the Imperial Tramp uh, Troop Transport. Um, so basically, it's got the old school Kenner. The best is that they actually have Kenner on the bottom of the box in the old school logo that it is because Hasbro bought Kenner and they actually um, are still able to use the, the label. So there's the troop transport right there. It's got all your troopers sitting on there. Um, much like the show. Troopers? It does not come with troopers, unfortunately. So you have to supply your own troopers. When you open it up... It comes basically in two pieces. One piece is the, the, the turret gun that's on the top, and the rest is the troop transport itself. It's retailed for 59 bucks. I think I got it for. I've seen it places for 60 bucks, 70 bucks. It's 
for some reason it's fairly expensive and it really shouldn't be because it's not that much. It should be probably be like a thirty a thirty dollar figure. Anyway, thirty dollar you vehicle. Add, are you adding any anything to it, any wear and stuff? Oh, it actually has a pretty decent amount of wear if you look at it. So I'm gonna bring it up close to the camera here. Oh it's weathered it's weathered pretty well. If you take a peek at it, they did a good job of spotting it and making it look dirty and grimy and nasty. Um so it actually is already weathered, which was a good thing because I definitely was going to weather it if it was not weathered because it makes it look that much better. Um, but it's already it's already came like that. It's got some scorch marks and blaster marks on the side of it. It's got the it's got the uh, the turret on top. <laughs> oh, Doc's getting his thunder stolen by Irene. I love it. That is uh, it's sorry, it's her name day, so it's fine. It's got the three the three sixty cam. She's a fan of the fucking she is, segment, bro. She, she is. She loves it. It's got the 360 tr the, uh, cannon up top. It's got a little hatch up here where you could actually look inside to see the you know the trooper seats that are inside there. But if you don't want to look inside and you really want to get crazy, you could actually just peel off the top, which kind of comes off right here, and then you could actually peek right inside to see the uh, the bottom of the troop transport. Now Spiro's probably getting thrown back to his old military days. The seats actually fold down from the walls. Nice the top so you could actually sit, seat four stormtroopers there my light in this room is the worst ever on the planet uh Yo, four stormtroopers there one of last those, those seats that kind of come down from the wall that shit it, it reminds me of uh they used to actually transport us in cattle trucks bro yeah well basically this is going to be what, yeah. what about that is the back also opens as well so you can you know dump your troopers out the back from over there just in case you want to shit them out from the sides That's um cool. They only have four of the six seats in there that actually have the working seat, which doesn't really make much sense to me, but that's okay. Up on the front over here, it's hard to see, but you could actually store Imperial blasters, like their, uh, you know, their their hand blasters on along the gun rack that sits over here. I happen to have an Imperial blaster handy, and you could actually put it right inside that gun rack, and it should clip right on. Uh, it didn't work so great, but uh. You get the gist. Way to blow the spot, kid. You got to fuck with it a little bit. Now it's stuck in there. Anyway, um, it also has opening hatch for the the two of the troopers on the side there. But the rest of the hatches do not open, which, again, doesn't make much sense. For 60 bucks, you should get all the fucking hatches open. You should get multiple seats. They should have should have lasers and, and shit going on, sounds. It does not. This is not the, your old school, you know, vehicles. The front opens up. So and you have a uh, twisting and, you know, it goes forward and back the, the controls. So you could actually sit your pilot inside there um, and his co-pilot. And the, uh, you know, that's where the stickers are at in the front. Usually they make you put the stickers on yourself, but this came pre-assembled with the stickers. Um, it ha has wheels up on the front so we can actually make it go. It doesn't really hover like it did in the show. Um, and the the coolest thing about this thing, I think, you know, beside the fact that it's, it's, pretty, it's, it's got, you know, gun cannons in the front as well. It's weathered pretty well. Um, they did a good job with the paint, so which I which I suspect is the reason why it is fairly expensive. Usually the vehicles are pretty plain and kind of one color. They don't bother with the paint. Um, but one of the cooler things about it is that it's actually a throwback to the the really the old school vintage Star Wars um, transport case that you that that was released. It was a, a thing a vehicle that looked very similar to this that you were able to put your figures in the side of it. And store them and take them with you when you go to grandma's house, you know, for, for you know, for uh, Easter dinner. And you want to play over there and lose your lightsabers at grandma's house. Um, and they took that design and they actually made it into the troop transport, which I thought was an awesome throwback to the uh, to the 70s, which was pretty cool. And I do have a trooper here, which we can put in. Here he goes. He's all excited, getting, you know, transported around like cattle. They barely fucking fit these goddamn motherfuckers. Here we go. Shove him in there. There he goes. He looks very happy to be in service of the Empire. Whee! Driving around. Yep. You know, exposed to the elements. All excited. Get a hit in the head with fucking flying debris. This is a great design, by the way, if you want to have all your soldiers killed. Because as you roll up to the battle, all you got to do is just start picking them off because they can't move anywhere. Just, you know, headshot, headshot, headshot. You want to turn that fucker around and get the back end of it, which is great. So um, that's the trooper transport. With my little remnant stormtrooper over there, you know, between that and the news of uh, the new stuff that's getting released, Doc's pretty excited about what the toy landscape is looking like in the uh, in the Star Wars future. So, 
I've already pre-ordered all that stuff I said before. Pop it on, stay awake. Um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, as usual, dropping a ton of dough just for the sake of the show, guys. I'm, gl- I'm glad I can write it off as a tax write-off too. So. <laughs> You're Puerto Rican. You don't pay your taxes. <laughs> All my <Why>? child support. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. You should paint that yellow and make it's custom a... figures. Make custom figures of uh, of our fans because they all go on the short bus. <laughs> That's some fucking city of shit there, man. Puerto Rico's not even a fucking state, and they still have to pay you the fucking taxes, man. Of course. No, they don't. And yeah, oh yeah. Puerto Rico don't gotta pay taxes, dude. Oh yeah. No. If they, if they paid they, taxes, they'd have to be part of state. I'm nah, telling you, they don't have to pay taxes. It's not, you know. I'll I'll, I'll explain it uh, another time. How right. how it's done. All right. Well, Doc, yeah. that well, was pretty a different show. Yeah, that exactly. Was pretty, that was a pretty uh, pretty cool transport vehicle. Uh, if your if your wife ever makes any lamb chops, she could put there in there, and bring it to you for dinner. It's nice. That'd be, that'd be amazing. I'd love that. little mint jelly on the side. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, so uh, there you have it, folks. Doc supplies us again with some cool toys from his uh, collection on Cinco de Mayo. I really thought he was going to bring out some like stormtroopers with like sombreros and. I was going to bring out uh, Juan Solo. We'll do a Juan Solo. Actually. A little Juan Solo, yeah, dude. You know his cousin Chewy looks like a vato. Anyhow, <laughs> so. Uh, you guys have anything else? Any other news or anything else you guys want to talk about real quick before we let's take this home? Um, did someone post an article about the fans? Oh yeah, yeah I, I sent that in there. That, that about the what? You know. The fans? Yeah, now you computer fan. That's loud. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> we uh, we can talk about it next week, but basically, you know, somebody from uh, I think it was comic book. Dot com, whatever it was, said that the real problem with the Star Wars, you know, universe now is the fucking fans. Oh, he's not uh, lying. And went on to yeah. shit on all the fucking fans, which I thought was fantastic and awesome. That's so. awesome, man. All right, well, let them know where they can find you boys at. You can find me at Dr. DR underscore Destroyo, D E S T R R O Y O on Instagram, Alex Royo on Facebook, Alex Royo MD on Twitter. You can find me, Spiro underscore A on Instagram, Handsome Reaper on Twitter. You can also catch me, uh, which I've been slacking lately, on the Rational Rage under Handsome Reaper TV on YouTube, and like my Rational Rage page on Facebook. You can find me at Greek God Papadon on Twitter, Greek God Papadon on Instagram, Demetrius Papadon on Facebook. Pro Wrestling Tees backslash Greek God Papadon is the Pro Wrestling Tee store where you can get your GGP t shirts. Um, you can find my matches and promos on YouTube via my page, Greek God Papadon. Tomorrow, you can catch me on Twitch with the Conspiracy Horseman. It's twitch.tv forward slash Conspiracy Horseman. Four pro wrestlers, myself, Stevie Richards, Big Sal Graziano, Ben Hamin. We sit down and we talk shop about conspiracy theories and always question the narrative. Um, more importantly, you can find the three of us together as a cohesive unit on Twitter at NFO underscore podcast on Instagram new force order on Facebook official new force order you can go to the website buy some merchandise if you if you guys stop being penny pinching losers uh, and the website is newforceorder.com and you can send emails to us regarding anything that we talk about on the show or if you just want to talk shop or you want to give us ideas about something to talk about, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's newforceorder at yahoo.com. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on Revenge of, on Revenge of the Fifth. Thank you for giving us your ears and your time uh, and your eyes if you're watching this on YouTube on New Force Order. Um, we want to thank you. Uh, the NFO always 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 will do what's right and that is not get ourselves over on star wars but get star wars more over with you this has been another exciting edition of the new 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 force order for life and that's just too sweet henceforth all you fans sigh Ah. Uh...
Suck!